Dear Susie, here is my plan. Dear Sam, my answer is yes. Dear Susie, one. Dear Sam, where? Dear Susie, walk 400 yards due north from your house to the dirt path which has not got any name on it. Turn right and follow to the end. I will meet you in the meadow. Where's the boy? I'm told that he's just been struck by lightning. The movie's set in 1965, and that really, uh, uh, that, I don't know that it's essential that, that, it, that it be that time period. Um, but it sort of came about because um, the island wh where we filmed the, 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 the story is actually, since 1962, it's, it's not really an island anymore. It's connected by a bridge to, to Newport, Rhode Island, um, and it's changed significantly. It's a completely different place from what it was. There's another island where we filmed part of the movie that's, that is still accessible only by ferry, and it's sort of a time warp. So I wanted the, our movie to be in that America that existed, you know, it, it, it's just one generation earlier. The year is 1965. We are on the far edge of Black Beacon Sound, famous for the ferocious and well-documented storm which will strike from the east on the 5th of September in three days' time. I wanted to make a uh, romance between two 12-year-olds uh, that was um, more powerful than they really knew how, how, what to do with, and that even that the parents, you know, were kind of overwhelmed by it. That it was that it was kind of out of everyone's control. What kind of bird are you? I'm a sparrow. She's a dog. No, I said. What kind of bird are you? And as I was working on it, I ended up sort of having something happen where this, I decided this girl in the story would be a big reader. And in fact, she's traveling with a suitcase full of um, fantasy books. And somewhere along the way, I started thinking more and more that the movie should really be one of her books, kind of. Um, and that that really ought to be our form. That the movie is the sort of story that the two characters in it would want to read. Where is your sister? I don't know, but she bought my record player for 10 days without asking. What does that mean? Dear Lionel, I need to use your record player. I will give it back in 10 days or less. Do not tell Mom or Dad. I will replace the batteries when I return. Signed, Susie Bishop. Walt, where the hell are you? Why are you cursing it? Does it concern you that your daughter has just run away from home? That's a loaded question. A 12-year-old with a crush is, that's really the whole world uh, for that person. Um, and in the same way that I remember when I was that age, I, I w when I would read a book, that the book would be my whole world. And I would sort of lose a sense of quite what is reality and what is the book. And it was the same thing with it, you know, the, um, a romantic feeling at that age, you sort of lose touch with what it, you are. It's like you're entering into a fantasy right then. And I wanted to kind of do something that related to that. Were you followed? I doubt it. Good. Is that a cat in there? Can you read a map? Uh-huh. I do cartography. I feel we should go halfway today and halfway tomorrow since you're a less experienced tiger and you're wearing Sunday school shoes. They're not really Sunday school shoes. Oh, thank you. Here's where we are right now. I'd like to pitch camp here by 1600, which means four o'clock. How's that sound? Fine. You want some beef jerky? Okay. Let's go. The big thing with, with working with children is finding them uh, because, you know, they're not, you don't, you don't just say, oh, I want, I mean, sometimes you can say, oh, if we could get the kid from such and such, but most of the time you say, we have to find somebody. And both of our main characters, the girl Susie is played by Kara Hayward, uh, and uh, Sam is Jared Gilman, and they are people we found in their schools. They hadn't been in anything before. But in the case of uh, Kara, her audition, which I, you know, the fir my first exposure to any of them I'm, is, is a little quick time on my computer, which I'm just watching hundreds, thousands of these, um, and her 
audition, she gave every appearance of making up the words as she spoke them. It's a scene I'd seen done so many times that I had come to hate the scene. And for the first time, uh, this girl is doing it just as if it's a documentary. Um, so I was immediately taken with her uh, and thought, well, sh not only can she do it, she's already doing it. Um, with uh, Jared, I saw his audition and his, and it was more the conversation that the casting director had with him afterwards. His personality, his, he made me laugh and he was appealing and funny and unique. For them, it's they're going to leave school, their whole life gets set aside, and they now have to be professionals. They have to be actors and um, report for work every day, and there's a lot to prepare that's not just getting into character. But I also feel like the best way for them to pre prepare for all the other things is to get into character and to just sort of start doing it and get into a routine with this company and become a part of the company. I can't offer you a legally binding union. It won't hold up in the state, the county, or frankly any courtroom in the world due to your age, lack of a license, and failure to get parental consent. But the ritual does carry a very important moral weight within yourselves. You can't enter into this lightly. Look into my eyes. Do you love each other? Yes, we do. But, but think about what I'm saying. Are you sure you're ready for this? Yes, we are. They're not listening to me. Let me rephrase it. Oh, we're in a hurry. Are you chewing? Spit out the gum, sister. In fact, everybody. I don't like the snappy attitude. This is the most important decision you've made in your lives. They, they, they're dressed up in costume, in period costumes, and they're in a setting that's unlike anything that they're used to. But for me, what I mostly want to see is them just being, feeling natural in it. And they usually are kind of quick to do that. They get used to what they, they well, this is the way I dress for now. I'm not going to dress this way uh, as soon as they let me go. Um, but what's interesting, though, is to see a kid uh, studying a typewriter like it is the most bizarre object. How does it work and what, what is this? Uh, you know, uh, that to me, uh, you know, that's the generation gap. All right, we know they're together. We know they're within a certain radius of this spot. I'm declaring the case with the county right now. Until help arrives, I'm deputizing the little guy, the skinny one, and the boy with the patch on his eye to come with me in the station wagon. Randy, you drop in and head up river with the rest of your troops, split up on foot. Becky, call Jed, tell him to circle over this end of the island and fly low. It's very difficult for me to see the whole uh, picture at once. I, 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 I gather together a lot of ingredients and I have an idea of how this element is going to relate to these other ones and that we're kind of finding some motifs and we're building something but I never have a clear sense of what it's going to be like when it's all together and I'm always surprised first I'm always surprised when I see the first dailies and it has all sorts of things that we've been working on and now there they are the way they're meant to be and and I'm so this is what it's like when you add them together and then uh, as the shots start getting attached one to the next, that's, all, that's another surprise. Scoutmaster Ward, I presume? Yes, ma'am. Your reputation precedes you. You two are the most appallingly incompetent custodial guardian social services has ever had the misfortune to encounter in a 27-year career. What do you have to say for yourselves? You can't do this. They'll eat him alive in there. Where? What's the name of the place again? Juvenile Refuge. Juvenile Refuge. Sounds like jail. Just find the boy and deliver him to social services. Nothing else is in your power. When I, when I see them in, in, one, in, in, in a movie that I'm working on, I say this is a bit like something we've done before. I usually am, you know, that, that's usually a problem for me. And I'm, I think, well, you know, we cannot have another yellow tent. The problem is that I then say, but I, but I don't really have any other color I like as much for this tent. So, it, so this movie, Moonrise Kingdom, well, in the Royal Tenenbaums, there is a yellow tent that figures kind of significantly in the story. There's, there's a couple of scenes that take place in this tent, and, and this movie, they're in a yellow tent. And, and it's really, um, I think it's unfortunately uh, some hard wiring uh, that I'm not really able to, uh, uh, to uh, reconfigure. Um, and um, I don't mind terribly links between uh, you know, links among my films because um, you know I like the idea of sort of building up a collection of these different pieces that are linked together, but um, but I don't. But I would love I love not to have someone say, well, that's just like what you did before. 
I'll be out back. I'm going to find a tree to chop down.